Welcome to Inspired Edinburgh, the home of powerful conversations. I'm Elliot Reeves and my guest today is Gurchet and Sandu. Chet is a former international drug smuggler, author, renowned podcast guest and founder and managing director of Alpha CBD. In November 1999, you were arrested at gunpoint in Alicante Airport and subsequently charged with smuggling the largest haul of black market steroids in Spanish history, valued at more than half a million dollars. Sentenced to four and a half years in prison, your book, From King of Karachi to Lockdown in the Costa del Crime, chronicles your life and drug smuggling operation and tells the story of how you rose to the top of the hierarchy inside Font Calent, one of Europe's toughest prisons famed for its brutal conditions and high profile inmates. Today, you spend your time growing your company Alpha CBD, one of the newest and fastest growing independent retailers of premium CBD products. Your ultimate aim is to provide the UK and European market with the best quality CBD products at the most competitive prices. You've given emotional and financial support to orphans, people in poverty and the homeless, your carer to four snakes, two Argentine tegu and two tortoises, and your podcast episodes with past inspired Edinburgh guests James English and Sean Atwood have been seen nearly a million times. Chet, it's absolutely brilliant to have you here. Welcome to the show. Okay, thank you. Thank you for having me <laughs> It's on. a pleasure. Thank that's you, that's quite an introduction. Yes. Yeah, no, yeah. Yeah, it sounded quite good, that. You like that? Yeah, it sounded quite good. I'm going to have to record that and send <laughs> that to people. Yeah, here's my bio. <laughs> I sound okay on that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, try, try to highlight the good things, yeah, you know? Yeah, okay, good. good. <laughs> so I mean, it's funny because your first podcast, sorry, your first podcast interview was with James. That was yep. in April 2018 and that's coming up for 400,000 views. Did you expect that sort of response to it? No, no way, no way. <laughs> I did that originally with my friend who knows James. Okay. Jamie Kerr. Thank you to him for hooking all this up, really. Yeah. It's through him. If he never did this, I wouldn't even been interested in podcasts no and Jamie told me listen James is starting out I think I was his eighth podcast mm -hmm. he says uh, <laughs> you'll get about uh, 3,000 views you know and I thought okay that's okay I thought okay I'll advertise my product blah 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 I'm doing this and in the end 400,000 is still going up and it's gonna go more yet yeah yeah it's gonna go more because uh, I'm due on channel 5 as well twice really uh, yeah well wow. this winter this winter, I've been told, they, they were filmed by, filmed by Endymol. Okay, yeah. Yeah, they're a good team to work with. So I've got two, I've got one, one episode, it's just all about me. Another one's about yachts. <laughs> yachts? About yachts, okay. yeah. But they had a 15 minute slot and, and they wanted me in it to just give my opinion on yachts, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> and so I told them what, what my opinion was, okay. <laughs> which they liked and it went down well with them. So they're due out as well soon. I like it. Yeah. Because yeah. uh, I, I was going to say, I've seen, that's not the picture, that's next to a pool, but I have, I'm sure yep. I've seen pictures of you and yachts. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> well, yeah, I've been on yachts. I have that's been brilliant. on yachts, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's all good fun on a yacht. Yeah. Until it gets a bit nasty. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how yeah. have things changed in your life since that episode with James then? Because obviously right, you've, done, James. you've yeah. done three episodes with Sean. And before you answer, I need to give a shout out, obviously, to uh, to James and Sean. They're doing yeah, like, guys, brilliant work. So. Cool guys. Yeah, yeah, they are. Excellent boys to work with as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how's my life changed? Uh, get recognition now, of, you know, obviously, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, how it normally works in my hometown, people just avoid me and nobody wants to come up to me. Yeah, but when I leave my town and I'm at a petrol station here or a train station here or there or there, people do come up to me and say, Oh, I've right, I've watched your podcast, can I have a selfie? And that's all good, you know. It's a bit like strange <laughs> because I don't expect it, you know. Uh, but like, it's all good because now it's all for good things, really. Yeah, uh, so I'm getting recognized for good and not bad. You know, yes. If there's all oh, that's that motherfucker who <laughs> fucking did that, or did that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then, but now it's all good. So yeah, it's getting positive. Uh, there's a film getting made as well uh, with a guy I'm working with. Don't want to name him, but uh, he was involved with uh, my brother, the devil. Right. Okay. Which is a really good film, yes. Yeah? Uh, and he wants to play my part, which is really cool, you know. So that's all going to be coming off. That's awesome. So yeah, it's going okay. Definitely. Going, okay, I wasn't expecting any of this. Mm -hmm. I was just like, I moved to Cyprus. I moved to Cyprus 2016 when I got divorced. Uh, I thought I was going to go and live there. Mm -hmm. I had two apartments there. I thought I'll rent one, I'll live in one. 
but it didn't work out with the police and this and that, uh, getting hassled, people saying, okay, because I did have an R8 there and it's still there now, but that's mm -hmm. what I paid for in apartments, I wasn't working. So they're saying, well, obviously he's a drug dealer still. Oh. And I wasn't. Mm -hmm. I just went there to chill the fuck out, you know, because I just had enough of everything. A divorce, it killed me off a little bit, my ex-wife, this and that, I lost a child. Mm -hmm. uh, I just thought, fuck this shit, I just want to chip. But they don't let you chip. Because uh, people think I'm still active and the local drug dealers are putting my name in the police and I'm getting Interpol raids, 20 handed, closing streets down, everything. Seriously? Proper heavy, yeah, proper heavy. And yeah, it's a heavy do out there. And then I was getting stopped at every airport, getting searched. Uh, just get sick of it, man. You know, I wouldn't mind if I was doing anything wrong. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> the thing is, when I was doing it wrong, it only happened once I got nicked here and I was free flow every time. But now I'm not doing anything wrong. Mm -hmm. It's every time. So how, how do you convince other people that you're, you've well, changed? You can only convince the few that want to believe it. And kind of certain people think, well, he obviously is still involved in that world. But no, I'm not, because if I was, I wouldn't be here now. Well, you were talking think about what I've done. But yeah. I only can talk about uh, what I've been convicted for. The other things I can't obviously talk about. Mm -hmm. But I'm fine with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hmm. You're, you're incredibly popular with the YouTube community. I mean, clearly, yeah. as evidenced by the views, but I mean, the comments, yeah. like, people just, like, love you. Yeah. Like, why, why do you think, why do you <laughs> think so, Why do you think I don't so? know, I'm hated in my hometown. I don't, <laughs> <laughs> I don't um, know, I don't know. I think it's maybe it's just because I tell the truth. Yeah. You know, I tell the truth, I don't bullshit it. Because uh, a lot of people pretend to be things and this and that. But I don't pretend to be a tough guy. I'm, you know, I'm not a tough guy, you know, but like, I'm tough enough, you know? That's, that's all it takes. You've got to be tough enough. And I don't build myself up to be this or that or that. No, I don't fucking do that. And I tell people how it is, and they, and they want advice, I tell them straight. Mm -hmm. And most of the time, they don't like to hear it. And then they get offended by you, and then they think, oh, he's a dickhead, him. So why? Because I told you the truth? No, you know? Uh, but other people, they can say, yeah, he's, at least they're telling the truth, you know? At least he's not bullshitting his way through this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so mm -hmm. maybe that's why it is. Yeah, it's all good. I think it's because you're so yeah. real, and you say it how it is, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Especially yeah. in today's climate, because everything's a little bit like, oh, careful what you can say, whereas <laughs> yes, you just say yes. it. <laughs> yeah, no, I just say, yeah, <laughs> yeah, but I'm still alive, I ain't been shot yet. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> but I like to <laughs> it's not get on with everybody now, you know? Yeah, you know, yes. Uh, you know, I, I like to get with everybody. The only people I offend is the Queen and the family, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but they are the heaviest firm. <sighs> they are the heaviest firm in the country, so... <laughs> take no people if I ever die, yeah? You know where it's come from. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, <brilliant>. Like Conan. <laughs> uh, so, like, you know, it, it's sort of fascinates Don't me. Don't say I messed it up already. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it fascinates me, the huh. the success of James and Sean's channel. Yeah. You know, like, the true yep, yep, crime yep. and the gangland culture yep. and stuff. Why do you think that's so popular? Because people are intrigued by uh, stuff that they don't know about. Yeah. And as uh, things that they are too scared to get involved in themselves, but they still want to know what it's like, what jail life is like. All these jail programs come on, there's loads, daily. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't watch any of them, yeah, because it's all a load of bollocks, really. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> it's all hyped up, made up, it's all built up, uh, where people go into jails and talk. Uh, I don't know, I'm not convinced. I think you need a real person. Like me, I would do that. Yeah. I go to jails and I'll interview and I'll and then when they're telling me stuff, I'll say, no, it wasn't like that. Don't <laughs> fucking lie to me. I mean, I'll tell you what you did. You know? <laughs> but they're just like scared of them and intimidated. And they go, oh, right. Okay. No, but half of these people, I know what they've done before. You know, you need to go in their past and think, I don't know, yeah. But I would, but I would do it a totally different way. Yeah. A totally different way. Yeah. And that would get views. Definitely. Yeah. They should get me, maybe a couple of other lads. Yeah, the three of us, we all go in and do it. 
Yeah. It would be so fun. <laughs> I don't think the, I don't think the prison system will, would allow it neither. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because it might cause a riot as well to go either way, things like that. Yeah. 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 But it'd be, better, it'd be good filming. Definitely. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm skipping ahead a little bit, but yeah. I'll, I'll come back. Um, <coughs> what, is it, what is it like in prison? <sighs> oh, prison's shit, man. Prison's a waste of life. Uh, your life is just on hold. You've got to stop now. Boom. Things are going on around you outside, but you have no, no control over anything. Mm. And that's quite hard. Because mm -hmm. you know you can't even do anything. Because before you have to be like, okay, I need to pay this bill. I need to pay my gas bill. I need to pay electric. I need to pay my council tax. I need to sort this out. You know, you, you need to do a lot of shit, yeah? When you're in jail, it all stops. So your mind does get a break. Yeah. From the normal bullshit. Yes. And you get three meals a day. And for me, I made it work. I did every program course available. In fact, I should have brought my book, jail book here. I've done every course in the English jail that, w that was available. Just to, just to fill my time, yeah. I did every one. And uh, I did a lot of things in jail, you know, because uh, and I trained in jail. Mm -hmm. I didn't take any steroids. I didn't take any drugs in jail. I just kept myself clean. So I used that period to, as detox, get myself good, get myself mind right again. Mm -hmm. And I left jail. And since then, I've been okay. And I've done good. And now I'm legal. I pay taxes. I have, Well, I paid taxes all my life anyway, yeah. But, um, <laughs> but now I've got a proper company. It's all tax registered. Everything's going good. I don't need to do anything illegal now because mm -hmm. that's why I made jail work for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's either, if you want to go there and feel sorry for yourself and think, oh, it's fucked up, I need an escape, which is what I did in Spain. Which is what I did in Spain. Uh, when I was in Spain, it was a totally different system there because that was my first sentence. No, my second sentence, Bricks knows in first, but then I went to there and... Uh, but that was totally different because I was thrown into a fucking, just a pit, man. Yeah, it wasn't like a, okay, jail, but it's not like an English jail where you have like a system hmm. where somebody speaks to you first, you get a probation officer. Have you got any uh, illnesses? Have you, are you uh, uh, suicide thoughts? Are you gay? Listen, when you go into British jail, you get asked a whole load of fucking shit. Yeah? Mm -hmm. so like be because they have to do this. Yeah, yeah. So they no, right, you go there. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and they were saying in Spanish, I couldn't even understand it anyway. Mm. So, but when I was in there, what was uh, the question where you asked me? What it made me... Um, it was really, yeah, no, I think it was like, what's, what's jail like? Yeah, what's jail like? And in Spain, it was just a totally different system there. There, uh, my mindset was totally different there. I just wanted to get out of it because it was that bad. Mm -hmm. that's, why, that's why I took heroin there. Mm -hmm. That's why I smoked heroin because like, day release on your mind, okay? Because for them hours when you're high, you're not really there, mm -hmm. you know? So mm -hmm. you're out of there, so it helps. Uh, I think the people that take drugs in jail now, they're weak because they can't handle the situation they're in. But I did this last seven stretch straight and I've been used to drugs all my life. But I did it straight and I've achieved a lot from that. Mm -hmm. It's hard for the first six months, it's hard work, yeah? Being straight. Mm -hmm. But then after that, you just, boom, you got a mindset and you're into your courses and you're doing this and you're improving yourself and your body's improving, your mind's improving and you're talking better to people on the phone, your family. So it's all going good, good, good. Mm -hmm. But if you take drugs, and then it's not, because your mindset's not right, and you might be on a downer when you phone your family, and then you're asking them to send money in. They go, Why do you need all this money? Because to feed your drug problem. And they know this. So you're upsetting them on the out as well, and when they come on a visit, you might be bashed up this and that, you might have a black eye, because you're paying your drug debts. Mm -hmm. And your family see this, and it, for them it's worse. Yeah. For me, in jail, right, okay, me, I know I'm fine. Yeah, I'm fine, you know? Fucking I'll do this motherfucker. Mm -hmm. But my mum don't know that. Yeah. 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 Mm. She don't know that. Mm. I'd like to go back to your early life. I mean, I, I don't, I, I'm cognizant that I don't think it was a happy time for you. Um, 
What time, sorry? And you, like the, your, your, your childhood. Early years, yeah. You know, yeah. like the early years of your life. Like yep. what that, um, yeah, maybe just tell me what your early life was like. Right, the early life, okay. My earliest memory is this, three years old. Three years old, uh, I was born in Hitchin, Hertfordshire. And uh, it was me and my sister, she was exactly a year younger than me. So she was two, I was three. My mum and dad both lived with my family and they had to go and work and then give all their wages to the family and then they got pocket money, which is how it was back then in the 60s and that, you know? Mm -hmm. And because uh, they, cause my family got my mum and dad over from India, blah, blah, blah. They ain't got money for a house, stay in the house. So all the wages go there. So we, me and my sister, had to, we were staying with babysitters, illegal babysitters, right? Uh, they were, they were like supposed to be Italian, right? But I don't know what they were. <laughs> but there was about 20 kids there, yeah? There was about 20 kids there on a daily basis in this one house. Uh, they just used to look after everyone's kids. Anyway, one day. But all these kids were aged from, from about one to about three, four, before they start nursery and shit. And uh, police raid, police fans, come outside, right? <laughs> and this is the first thing I noticed here because I still remember the police van at three years old, right? And then they all went, right, you lot, upstairs in the bathroom. Anyway, they got all 20 of his kids in here, stuck us all in the fucking bathroom, right? And they said, right, lock the door and do not open it. Lock the door, didn't open it. So there's all of us in here, yeah. Some of the kids are now crying a bit, yeah. And uh, the police, boom, come. We can hear them, yeah, raiding it. And obviously they're gonna come to the bathroom. Boom. And then they went, open the door. Slowly they said, yeah. But we were told not to open the door. So we didn't open the door, yeah. <laughs> we didn't know it's, but I knew it was a feds, but I was still thinking, I'm not, you know, I'm not going to open the door, right? Because yeah. I'm told not to open the door. Yeah. So anyway, they were banging on it again, and now all the kids were crying. And then my sister started to cry. And I said to her, oh, listen, don't cry, I'm here. At three. Jeez. <laughs> anyway, they kicked the door down, right? The fucking, they told us back away from the door, and they fucking just kicked the fucking door down. And then they got all those 20 kids, took us all to the police station and put us in cells. And until our parents finished work, and then they had to come and pick us up. So that's my first experience of being locked up as well at three years old. Oh my God. Yeah. How ironic is that as well? At three, put us in cells. Seriously? Well, yeah, because there's nowhere else to put us there. Because back then there was no like, uh, social services sort of thingies happening. All oh, right, there's a procedure now. Mm -hmm. They went, nah, just stick them on the fucking cell. So Fed is in that a little bit. Get away with that. Fed is in that. You can get away with that now. <laughs> you got away with everything back then. Yeah, yeah. There was no rules or anything in anything, were there? You know, now I look back and think, wow, what the shit people, you, what they used to say and what they used to get away with. It's incredible. Well, so, what was it like growing up for you? Growing up, uh, yeah, I had a stutter. I couldn't speak. Uh, my family just used to talk. Punjabi in the house, did not you, English. Did you speak, uh, presumably? Punjabi, yeah, but yeah. I couldn't speak English. All oh, right. And I had a stutter. So, <laughs> okay. come on, mum and daddy, you didn't give me an easy go here, <laughs> did you, in life? Yeah, you could have made me speak English. Anyway, never mind. So I went to school, I couldn't even speak English. And uh, couldn't even speak English. And that was a rough old do as well. And, and I had a stutter, so I was in special needs classes. Oh, right. Yeah, so I was in special needs for two, three years. And then they said, right, but, but that I enjoyed that. Special needs, yeah? Because uh, we're all a bit fucked up in there, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> but then when they took me out of there and put me in the mainstream fucking school, mm -hmm. I didn't like it. And I still had to stutter, and it was hard work for me on a daily basis. I couldn't even say my name. Seriously? Because we had to stand up in class every morning, yeah? Say our names, yeah? Good chatting. And I used to go, g -g 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 -g. yeah? I couldn't get it out. And so they all used to fucking laugh. So that was their daily joke and a morning joke, yeah? Me. Mm -hmm. 
and I'm the only brown face in the class. This is uh, Huddersfield now, because I didn't go to school in Hitchin. Mm -hmm. uh, we moved to Huddersfield then when I was four, and that was my, and then one time, I'll tell you the story, what happened here in the classroom. Uh, you used to get milk, okay, milk. Bottles of milk, everybody, and there's milk money. I think we had to pay for it then or something, yeah? But there's something about all the milk money had been stolen, right, from the teacher's desk in the drawer. Mm -hmm. So they were questioning all the kids, right? Have you got it? Have you got it? Have you got it? The searches all. But when they come to me, because I'm the only brown face in the class as well, and they asked me, and I was just going, ah, 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 ah. And they went, right, it's him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? So anyway, got fucking nicked for that. They put me, told me to sit outside the headmaster's office until seven o'clock, until my dad finished school. And I mean, until my dad finished work. So he had to come to school to pick me up and to answer for me. But my dad asked me, and I said, no, I didn't take it. And he believed me, but still I got that, yeah? Ridicule, yeah? And then mm -hmm. after that, I got more ridicule. Because now I'm the thief as well. Mm -hmm. So now I'm the fucking thief. If I'm gonna tell you the story, it's fucking, this is epic, the story, right? So now I'm the fucking thief. And uh, in this classroom, yeah, uh, there was one girl who I fancied, right? Who was, I was only four or five, right? <laughs> right, but you do fancy somebody at four or five as well, yeah? yeah. And, but she never used to take the piss out of me in the morning, right? So that's why I liked her probably, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, anyway, on this morning, even she started laughing. <sighs> and that was a breaking point for me. I thought, all right, I got to make a move. Got to make a move. And then they're all turning to piss out of me. So, and then uh, for the next couple of days, it was hard work, hard work, hard work. So I thought, right, I need, I fucking, I got to do something here. So I thought, I've either got to fight them, fight these boys who are turning to piss out of me, or what? But I wasn't a fighter, I was really little for my age. Mm. I had second hand clothing, I was fucked up, couldn't even speak, couldn't even speak English hardly. And uh, so, right, I went, okay. So this is what I did. I'm not saying it's good what I did okay. there, yeah? Right? Okay. okay. <laughs> but it dealt with the situation. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay, this girl that I fancied, right? I'm gonna get a lot of shit off this one, yeah? But, but it'll be good for your views, right? <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. They're on the schoolyard. She was skipping. She was skipping, right? And I was always alone, yeah? Had no mates, anyway. So I thought, right. I've, I've fucking right. So, so I just went up to the girl, right, okay? She was skipping, she stopped, yeah? I went up behind her, and I just pulled the knickers oh. down. Right, listen, yeah? The whole school yard just stood still. Doof. She, she didn't even pull them back up, right? <laughs> 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 and she was just starting to cry. And then, Everybody just looked at me, and then everybody was in shop mode. And then they're right. And then they got me, and they went, right, you. And then uh, they had to call my dad again, but my dad was at work, and they said, no, it's urgent, so somebody has to come here. So my aunt came, Bridget, she remembers this, yeah? So she had to come to school to answer, and I said, listen. And then, but she explained, yeah, listen, he gets shit daily. He's been getting it daily, daily from day one, yeah? Because yeah? he can't speak, and this and that, and they went, right. Did you go lie on the school? They went, right, yes, he's got one last chance. Because firstly, I'm a thief, apparently, mm. and now I've done this. Mm -hmm. Sexual assault, yeah? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but she was the same age. <laughs> <laughs> right, so fuck that, anyway, right? But after that, bam, when I got up here, yeah, asked for my name in the morning, I just said my name and it come out, no stutter, right? And everybody was shocked. And I went, yeah. And I sat back down, and then nobody took the piss on me after that. So there you go. So you learned early. So there you go. Listen, I, listen, I couldn't fight them. If I try to fight them, I get fucked up. There's always a, wee, there's always a way and a means of doing something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, always. You just gotta look at all the angles. But I did that at four years old. Jeez. Because I had to do that. Yeah. And yeah. I did the same situation inside, in jail, because I had to do that. Mm -hmm. And I did the same situation where my dad put me in the area in the northeast. Yeah, because I was an artist to put up with all the abuse and that. 
behind the till, and he wasn't even there. You just get put in a situation, and you've got to adapt to it. Mm -hmm. It's not what you choose. I've just been put into it, put into that, put into that. And I've dealt with it, to the best of my means, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. At, at that time. Yeah, exactly. How, how much have you healed from the emotional trauma of your early life? <sighs> I don't know. I don't know. I consider myself a bit fucked up, you know? Like, do you still feel the pain of how it was? Well, now? yeah, depression I get, yeah. 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 But, you know, what's, what's unfortunate is that people, they, they look very, sim um, they take a very simplistic view of individuals. So, you know, you've got like somebody who commits a crime or something and they just see the, the, the end result of it without considering what's happened in this person's yep. life. Like it, what, what's caused them to, to behave yeah. in certain ways and stuff, you know? So. Well, yeah, it's part and parcel of it. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, it just depends what you go inside for as well and what's happened. Uh, some people don't really have a choice neither. Mm -hmm. Not much of a choice. Yeah. They want the money, but they don't see any other angle, you know, yeah. where they were. How can I? Yeah. I don't have the support. I don't have a family basis. What they can, they're going to lend me money. I can't go to a bank, I can't get a loan, I can't do this, I can't do that. So how do you start up in business? How, fucking how do you do it? Yeah, exactly. And there's a lot of, we all want it. Mm -hmm. We mm -hmm. all want it. Mm -hmm. Who just wants to be under, who just wants to stay like that? Just get by, pay my bills, just get by. No, we all want a little bit extra, man. There's nothing wrong with that, is no. there? No, that's a natural instinct, you mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. uh, and, how we, and how we go about it, you got to do it by the best of your means. Yes. Yeah. What you are equipped with. Yeah. Yeah. That's why girls go into prostitution, go in the sex industry, okay, lap dancers. Okay, lap dancers, people slate them and that, yeah? I slate them as well. <laughs> but uh, because, because you're quite bad, you girls, yeah? <laughs> but I do admire you. I think if I was a girl, I'd be a lap dancer. I would be a lap dancer, you know? Mm. I would, I would train, keep myself right. Because I was thinking, okay, I ain't going to sell drugs because you can't do it if you're a woman, yeah? Because you can't get involved in a man's world it, because there's loads of women that are saying, I sell drugs. Try and give it a tough chick. But you're not tough chicks, man. Wake up, baby. It's a man's world, this game, yeah? Okay, it's a man's world where you get slapped about and you can get shot, yeah? Mm -hmm. It's not for women. Just look after your kids, please. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Stop trying to be a gangster. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and uh, so, yeah, this game... What was I saying before? Uh, I'll ask you another question. Um, Go on then, what, so on what, what was your What was your relationship like with your parents growing up? Oh, parents, yeah, my mum, dad, the, oh, it was like that. They were just at work all the time, work, work, work. It was a hardship for my own man. The food we used to get was shit, roti, we get chapatis, you call them, yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, but with dal, just vegetable dal, but when you have that every day, mm. every day, lentils every day, baby. I had cut lentils come out my fucking ears, man. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, and then, I, and then I never used to eat. And they said, well, why is he so small and skinny? And I said, well, because fucking lentils every day. Yeah. On a dinner time, we used to go to school. We used to go to school at dinner time. And uh, me and my sister, she was exactly a year younger. So we used to have to walk back to the house, which is about two miles away. Yeah, we only had an hour, walk there, and it would be lentils and dry roti. We were supposed to eat that and then go all the way back. We used to go, my sister, she used to eat a little bit, but I just fucking used to leave it and just walk home. So it was just like walk to walk, stay empty, no food, no food. And I remember one day, this was epic, we found a one pound note <laughs> in the snow. And I went, oh, wow, oh, Jazz, look, it's a one pound note. I went, let's get some fish and chips. <laughs> so we bought fish and chips, but then you can get two lots of fish and chips for a pound. It's really? Still change, yeah. It's good, good bargain. Well, for oh, a pound, that was like 10 pound now. Yeah, you know? uh, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, right. so, oh, wow, wow. And then I ate. And that's the only time I remember eating on a dinner time. <laughs> you, yeah. You've got really, like, clearly quite vivid memories of 
you know, yeah. like go, going back. No, I have. Life. No, do, I have. I do, have. Do, do you think a lot about the past? Yeah. Do you? Oh. Why? Because I don't think there's anything in the future for me. Seriously? What sort of? Honestly, I don't look forward to the future. And I never have. I just take it a day at a time. Man. What, what is it you, that you're uneasy about with the future? For starters, I'm supposed to be alive. <laughs> Certainly, <laughs> if I want to be alive. Thirdly, I've like lost a lot of things. I lost people. I'm divorced twice. Lost my children. I'm on my own. It's not the best. Mm -hmm. It's not the best. Like I've not spent a massive amount of time around you, Chet, but I've watched your podcast, and you know I like to think I'm a decent judge of character. Mm -hmm. But I, you know, I I believe that you're a good person. I think you are a good person. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Like, you know, you've not said or done anything that would make me think otherwise. You know, you've obviously had things in your past, but me personally, I don't judge you based on your past results. I judge you based on how you are now, how you treat me, how you are, and you know. Yeah. yeah. Cool. <laughs> um, right, where are we? <laughs> we? We've done the we've done the sort of uh, you know early stuff, and yeah, we, we get to quite deep with that. W what were your your aspirations growing up? What did you aspirations? Want to, I wanted to be yeah. an artist, <laughs> graphic artist. Uh, I was really good at art. Back then, it was all levels. Yeah, it was all levels. Uh, <laughs> it was all levels. I only got one. I got like, I got ungraded in chemistry and stuff, physics. <laughs> <laughs> I got ungraded. <laughs> I'm fucking hell, I couldn't believe I fucking got ungraded. <laughs> How stupid must I have been? <laughs> but art, but art, I got a B. I would have got an A if my eight week project would have come out. But I was making this skull out of clay um, and it was all cool. I had it glazed, put it in the clay oven. It blew up in the clay oven because I didn't take all the air bubbles out of the clay. Oh. So that fucked me up for an A. So I got a B. But that's the only thing I got. So I wanted to be a graphic artist. I was good at drawing, painting. Uh, but my old man, he didn't let me do that. He wanted to go to business, make money, buy a shop in the Northeast where there was cheaper, there were cheaper up here. And he had me as a workforce because he knew I was leaving school. He went, right, there we go. There we go. How strict was your dad? Yeah, strict, strict, man. Yeah. Uh, he, didn't, he didn't let me out of the house until 21. Seriously? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I seem to be saying seriously a lot about quite a yeah. lot of the things that you're saying. I don't want to go on about too much about him, yeah? No, I know, but, I know. Uh, but yeah, but yeah, it was strict, dude, man. He didn't let me have a girlfriend. The first girl, the first girl I kissed, I married. Is that right? 21, I, yeah. The first time I kissed a girl, 21 years old. Check that one out. They're doing it at 12 now. Yeah. They need to fucking get a grip on it. Yeah, yeah, It's starting way too early, man. Mm -hmm. Starting way too early. You need to leave school even before you even think about having a boyfriend, I would say. Personally. Interesting. Yeah, personally, man. Yeah? Because these boys, yeah, they're all... Because some of these girls are just ruining themselves from the ages of 13 to 15. And by the time they're 16, 17, oh, so-and-so's had you, so-and-so's had you. Mm. And you're not like wife material no more. Keep me so cool, man. Mm. Uh, because if somebody wants you, he doesn't want all your mates to have fucked you as well. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Uh -huh. Because uh, he's looking to come in contact with the mates and you'll be in the same room, man. It, it's, it's, it's a bit awkward, isn't it? Mm -hmm. well, so, that's, yeah. It's quite a yeah. sort of conservative attitude, but yeah. I, I would yeah. agree with you, definitely. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, but you know, I guess that you, like your um, your dad and that way of life is maybe a sort of cultural thing as well. Yeah, it's is cultural. Right? Yeah, they were all like that back in the day. <laughs> yeah. They were all like that back in the day. <laughs> so he was he was only following suit. Yes, he was like because uh, they're all told, yeah, right, okay, we're Sikhs here now. Yeah, we're in a white world. <laughs> we're in a white world. Yeah, don't let the whites take control of your children because right. we are from India and we have to keep our uh, thinkings and our ethics, put them into our children so they think like us, yeah? But that's what they try to do by keeping us away from white people, black people, Chinese people, the whole world, a spectrum of people. 
yeah? We're only really allowed to mix with like Indians, Pakistani kids, yeah? Because back then there wasn't really segregation as what it is now, you know, with the Muslims and the Indians and this and that. Back then, Indians, Pakistanis, we were all seen as one. Right. And, we were, and we all classed ourselves as one as well, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. uh, because it was like, because we were a minority, there was only a few of us, so we had to stick together. Mm -hmm. It's no but us lot having a war, they're only going to war now because there's fucking loads of them. Yeah. Yeah, back then it wasn't like that, so you had to stick together. And so then we were a unit, and back then it was good. Uh, but now I like to keep it like that anyway. Mm -hmm. You know? Um, what was the question? <laughs> I don't know. You know I'm just <laughs> it's fine, we just kind of, yeah. you know, we'll just yeah. meander through yeah, it, it's no problem. Uh, I've done a bit of research actually, it's, it's interesting because I've, I've spoken, uh, one of my previous guests, Tony Singh, um, he's a Sikh and he wears a, a red turban ah, actually. from uh, South Shields? Uh, no, he's, uh, he's, he's Scottish, he's a chef, ah. he's uh, like a TV celebrity chef. Oh yes, 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 so, I know who you mean, yeah, I know yeah. who you mean. So, who um, you mean. so I, I, we touched just very briefly on the yeah. Sikhism, but uh, so your name Sandu and I think it's Sindhu would be Jat yeah, originally, Jat, yeah. 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 Jat, yeah. It's like um, a caste system in India. Yes. Yes. Uh, See, I never knew about any of this. Yeah, until I started. which is all wrong as well, yeah? <laughs> okay. <laughs> because they all say, yeah, uh, Sikhism, we all see everybody as one, equal. Male, female, animal even. Huh. We're not allowed to eat animals. We worship Mother Earth, and we're only allowed to eat what we can grow. This is Sikhism, yeah? It's the mm -hmm. only religion that sort of makes sense because we don't have an imaginary God. The 10 gurus we have, they were real mm -hmm. and they did exist. Mm -hmm. And it's their scriptures and their sayings, what we go by. And uh, so there's no actual God. Mm -hmm. It's the gurus, but they did exist. Yeah. Huh. So it's the only one that makes sense. And plus, we're peaceful people. And... Uh, what was the question again? <laughs> it was about Sikhism. Well, it oh, was about Sikhism. being a, a, like a Jat. Yeah, yeah, Jat, yeah, yeah, the caste system. Mm -hmm. And then they say everyone is equal. But then they come out with a Jat, the Jamar, there's, a, there's about five others, yeah? What's like, uh, it's like the aristocracy here. Okay. Right? Yeah. You have the aristocracy, middle class, lower class, middle, blah, 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 working class, and then you got, then you got shit at the bottom, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> and but this is what they built up in India, but they weren't allowed to do that because they said everyone's equal. Yeah, so that's a bit wrong. But yeah. Jat is number one. Huh. <coughs> I've, I've got some good stories about this okay. as well. <laughs> You love a story. <laughs> uh, right, I think that's this, another reason why right. people love listening to you, because your this stories. This is a good story, yeah. <laughs> right. In my village, uh, we were Jat, Sandu's in my village, in my, in my dad's village, and uh, Judge, the bud day we were called, yeah? And it's the first time I went to my village. I just left jail. 2002, my mum and dad said, okay, we want to take you to India. I went, okay, because then they were trying to get me fixed up with a wife sort of thing, yeah? <laughs> so, okay, I'll go, yeah? But my uh, family... In my village, they're like uh, Sarpanch, which means the mayor of the village sort of thing, right? Mm -hmm. And so if anybody wants to like uh, loan money or somebody, they could come to us and then we can vouch for that person and say, okay, if he doesn't pay, I vouch for him. But these people are quite dangerous as well because they do kill people and this and that. But anyway, I didn't know about any of this. Um, but apparently I was next in line. Yeah, right? Because I was the head of the family <laughs> and my dad wasn't that interested. And so it was this uh, party going on, Lori in January. And there was parties going on, but all the men were in one place drinking, eating meat, and all the women uh, just like uh, having a dance, this and that. And so anyway, I stuck with my mom and my sister. I said, okay, I want to go with you guys. I can't be asked with all them because I just get out of jail. Couldn't be bothered with getting, dealing with people, men were pissed, because I know what's going to happen. I thought, I'll stay away from them. <laughs> so I just went with my mum and my sister. <laughs> I went with them, and they were all dancing. And yeah, there were about 50, 60 women, girls dancing. And then they see me come in, and then they all stopped dancing. And then they turned their backs and made like a wave, no lie, like Moses, <laughs> so I could walk through. Wow. Yeah, the respect they showed me. 
Because the first time I've come to the village, stop dancing. <laughs> and then they all went like that. Put their heads down. Respect. Because they're my sisters, all them. They're all sandals in that village. Okay. Yeah. So. <laughs> I was, my head was a bit blown, you know, I'm going, what the fuck? And then I've got other stories, we'll get a bit worse, okay. right? Okay, you want to hear it, I'll tell you as well. Go on right, then. Right, okay. I went to the next village, yeah? Uh, my uncle is dead now. Uh, he was cool though, but he was a bit of a G. He went to California, he died there, but he was on the drink. He had a massive drink problem. Mm. And, uh, but anyway, he said to me, listen, yeah. I mean, you're, you're in my village. Obviously, I can't fuck anybody in my village because they're my sisters. You get me? That's how it works there, yeah? Mm. You can't, because they're my girls, yeah? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. My family. But you can from another village. So he goes, right, you're in my village now. He went, listen to me, yeah? He went, you can do what you want. He went, you can just go, yeah, into that house. Whether she's got a husband or not, it doesn't matter, just go in. Get a hold of her, yeah? Just get a hold of her. Rape her, she'll struggle for a bit, but that's normal. <laughs> but she won't open her mouth and she won't say nothing. I went, yeah? He went, yeah. I went, no. I went, just leave me out of that one, bro. I went, I'm not that desperate for my fucking Lego. No. I said, I'm just happy to send a wank, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but this is how their mentality Jeez. is over there. They're fucked. And then I'm up. You know what it is? I've got loads of stories about India. That doesn't, that we doesn't, can make a whole episode about my trip to India. That, that sort of mentality doesn't translate well to our Western culture, though, does it? No, not really. Not <laughs> really. But uh, this is how they operate. Really? You know, well, we'll, we'll, we'll answer the truth. So what's, what are the, the laws like around that? The laws, you just pay, you just pay the police off. Right. One time, um, I was with these other two boys. Recently, this actually. No, this is about 2010. 11, 12. We were driving through, driving through to the village, and there was a dead body outside the road. I went, whoa, 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 stop. And he went, no, 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 he's dead. He went, how do you know he's dead? He went, uh, because he was there four hours ago. I went, well, stop the fucking car. <laughs> he went, no, we can't do that, because if you stop the car and report it to the police, you're a suspect automatically. <sighs> I went, right, okay. Anyway, that had my head a bit fucked here. Then we went back. Two days later, went by the same spot, the body's still there. Two days later. Because nobody reported it, because nobody wants to get involved. Mm -hmm. That's how bad it is there. Rape, killings, muggings. Uh, one time I got married, I was getting a taxi to this other village, and I was told by a taxi driver, right, listen, uh, we can get hijacked on this road, yeah? Because the backward roads there, yeah? Mm -hmm. They said, uh, we can get hijacked and they know that there's been a wedding here. I went, right, okay. I went, do they have guns? He went, no, just knives. I went, that's fine, I'll deal with knives, let's just go. They <laughs> 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 like, me. He went, right, okay. I went, if they've got guns, it's different. I went, let's go. <laughs> but nobody stopped. And nobody stopped this. But that's India. Yeah. Good job. Mm -hmm. That's scary. And I help orphanages there as well. There's an orphanage there. Mm -hmm. uh, like the Punjab has a, a lot of money. There's more billionaires there than anywhere else in the world for that small section of a, that small section of the world. But yet, if you have a girl there, they see a girl as a hindrance, and they see a girl as an expense, and so they just either kill the girl or put her in a drain or give her away. Mm. And this woman I work with, uh, she has the unique. A uh, unique orphanage in Model Town, Jalandhar, and I've helped them. I've sent their money over, and I bought stuff for them. And how she works is, if someone's got a baby, you come up with your baby in a sort of an ATM machine. You ring this little bell, you walk away, and then she takes care of the baby. And there's sixty girls there, yeah. uh, but they need sponsorship. Mm -hmm. People to pay for the schooling, uh, clothes, which is what I, which is what I do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, hmm. yeah. India's hard work. People say, "Oh, what a beautiful country!" You want to have a look at it properly, man. You don't look at it properly. Mm. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's not, and the amount of uh, uh, the corruption. Like, there's no mafia in India. 
Not, not really. The police control it. Mm. The police control it. You have, if you want somebody killed, you have to go to the police. Ask them. Mm. And then they kill it. And then you pay them. But they get away with the killing. Mm. Can they just make something up? Mm. They say, well, he really pulled a gun on me, I shot him, boom. That's the police report done. See you later. <laughs> <laughs> Would you ever live there? No, no chance, no fucking chance. I'd be dead there. I'd yeah. Be dead there within the year. <laughs> there was 10 grand on my head as well once. I think it's still riding still. Because I fell out with uh, <laughs> some family members and they're a long story. Is this but, over there? Is well, this, this is here. Chet, I need to ask you something actually. I was going to ask <laughs> you off camera, but I'll just ask you. There's a video on YouTube that's currently got about 7,000 views, and it looks like you going into a chip shop and taking the salt and throwing it around yeah. and stuff. Yeah. And then the comments are like, is that actually Chet? Is that Chet? Yeah. And I'm like, I'm pretty well, sure yes. that's Chet. Well, what, what's happening there? <laughs> I need to know. Right, what's happening there is this. Uh, this is a reason. Someone said it was your cousin. No, it's me, yeah. But no, the, the person that runs the chip Yes, shop. yes, is that my true? cousin. And I went to see him because uh, we have an ongoing case going on and there's uh, money involved and this and that. And he doesn't want to pay. Uh, he's got a lot of dollar. He sent three million back to India, Ooh. which is them are the people that put the money on my head to, to get me killed. But anyway, I went to see him. I went to see him. and um, But he wasn't there. So I said, call your husband. And then she just... But she called me a black bastard, oh. yeah, right? And I went, taking a piss out of you, you black yourself, you just it was me, <laughs> right? And so that's why I reacted the way I did. And then the other guy was going, the guy that threw the vinegar out, he said he's got his two daughters in the back of there. But there's another story about these, yeah? And about child images and this and that. Oh, right. It's quite complicated, yeah? So I said, you shouldn't be leaving your children in a shop like this at the end of the day and you're driving around dropping off pizzas and your kids are here alone. Are you kidding me, baby? I mean, do social services know about this? Mm. And then, so that's why I threw the video, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that was that, basically. But then I got nicked by the police. I told my story to the police and they were happy with my thing. I said, I won't go about there again. I said, but I only went to see her husband, not her. But I said, phone him, tell him I'm here. Because he won't answer my calls. So what can you do? You have to go see somebody in person. And I was expecting him to be there because I was told he was going to be there, but mm. he wasn't. Mm -hmm. And that's that. Oh, well. Yeah. That explains that one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 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 what, was the, what was the first crime that you ever committed? <sighs> crime? Like serious crime? Well, theft, I did theft, obviously, yeah? Mm -hmm. Stealing. I got nicked for stealing, credit card fraud, I did credit card fraud. The very serious was the drugs. Was that? Steroids. Uh, crime wise, that was my first serious offence. Oh no, but there was an affray involved as well. There was an affray, which was a fight. Uh, what happened with my sister, with the first people she married. But I don't want to go on about that because mm. uh, I mentioned this once with Sean and she got on a high horse and okay. tried to get me off YouTube because I mentioned her name. <laughs> so she can fuck off. <laughs> anyway, go on. <laughs> <laughs> but, there's, so, but there's a lot of things, if I mention them, people are going to get upset. And yeah, then, no, it's and fine. I don't want to open they're gonna try and get it cans of worms that I don't want to yeah, have to deal yeah, with, quite yeah, frankly. Yeah. Um, what did you do? So I'm trying to think a couple of questions around this. Um, did you think that you would ever get caught? And if you got caught, what did you think was going to happen? <sighs> did I ever think I was going to get caught? Yeah. Did, yeah really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I was like high on GHB all the time. Oh, and right. drink and drugs when I was doing this. Oh, okay. Back in the day, I was taking GHB in a liquid form. We were just taking it through on the, taking it through in the aircraft. Because then you could take <laughs> liquids through back then. Oh, yeah. A full yeah. bottle. Yeah. We just used to get wrecked on the plane. And then get wrecked there because we had that much and we were just that high making that much money. You just like don't really think about getting caught. You don't really think about it because you're just on like a roller coaster and it's just full of drugs, women and fucking money and doing what you want. And people being scared of you. And then when you're at a young age, that's all appealing. It's all appealing. 
but you know it's going to come round to you. Mm. If you don't, you're stupid. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm. well, what did you think would happen if you got caught? What did you jail, think? isn't it? Jail. Yeah. Yeah, jail. I know I'm going to jail. You know, I was ready for it in a way, but I wasn't ready for Spain. Mm. I thought jail in England I can handle. I've got my people there. People know who I am. There's a structured system there. But I didn't think I'd end up there. That was the thing that got me. Okay. Yeah. But can't say Spain taught me a lesson. England did. Is that right? Yeah. Spain was different. It was just like, it was just rough and ready. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It was just like being, it was like being back in the street, but jail in England isn't. You have to watch what you do, watch what you say. Mm-hmm. You can't have a joint there. In jail, you can just have a joint in the yard. Mm-hmm. As long as you're not messing with the screws, they leave you alone. Mm. Yeah. One of my questions is, um, it's November 1999, you're in Ale- Alicante Airport carrying half a million dollars of contraband, heading towards security. You turn a corner to see seven armed guards and you've got four red dots from machine guns <laughs> pointing at your forehead. Yeah. What, what's your first thought? Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> thought it might be something like that. <laughs> well, did you think, no, like, I knew I like, can done. I run? Can you I, know, like, I there... knew, yeah, I went, right, it's happened. You know, so you just think, accept, right. it's acceptance. Yeah, acceptance. you think, right, it's happened now. Okay. It's happened now. End of the road. Yeah. It's happened. So let's just deal with it. Or try and deal with it. Mm. Try and get bail. Try, try and get out of here. Pay my way out of here. Mm-hmm. But that didn't work either. I was there. Uh, because I thought I'd be paying my way out of them countries, you know? Like, it didn't work like that. <laughs> didn't work like that. <laughs> yeah. That's why I thought if I get nicked in these countries, it's okay, I'll pay my way out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but... No. It didn't happen. They weren't happening, no. No. When did you first take steroids? Steroids, um, mid-20s, 23, 24. Were you already training? Yeah, training, yeah. I trained for a few years. I started training from about 20 years old, 19. But I always had like sort of little weights, press ups I used to do. Mm-hmm. Just why, you know, I've always done that all my life. Uh, and yeah, I trained for a few years and then, but I was like naturally sort of slim, skinny kid. And so for me, I couldn't get past about 11 and a half stone. Right. No why it? My metabolism was quite high. And mm-hmm. um, I would have like six shits a day. Yeah, you know, it's like I can't Whoa. hold food and I'm still like that now. I, you, know, you know, I can't hold food. Uh, I'll eat two hours later and yeah, I need a shit. Boom. Some people think that's perfect, yeah. But okay, I don't mind it, you know. I don't <laughs> mind it. Yeah, but that's how, uh, that's how I was back then. And uh, what was the question about me? Well, yeah, so what was, the what steroids. was yeah, what, the what steroids. sort of cycles were you doing then? Four cycles, yeah. I started off small, taking about two injections a week. And then I started to sell them. I started to import them. I started, but then, you know, when it's all in front of you, and then I could take 20 injections a week. 20? Yeah, a week. Was that like sustenone you were taking? That was, that was a mixture. I would take a mixture of trembolone, sustenone, testosterone, Deca. Deca, Dianabol tablets on top of that. I, I would take the whole spectrum of drugs, Winstrol, everything. Really? Change all the cycles I had. I used to jab into my legs, tricep, bicep. And one time, all my punched shoulders, they were so sore, I stuck it in my chest. Stuck it in my fucking chest. I thought <laughs> fucking crazy I was, by the Sight injections. But I was doing, yeah, but I was doing, my bench press was over 200 kilo. 200 kilo bench, it was awesome. Awesome power. How did you feel? I felt fucking... <laughs> But I was big, felt strong, powerful, and, but not good really. <laughs> <laughs> not good really. I used to lose my temper a lot. Yeah. Uh, which, it's all bad, especially if you mix it with drink. Yeah. And back then I never used to smoke weed, so I never had a calming effect. Uh, so yeah, it's bad. So what was the outlet? How did you get rid of that kind of well, like well, rage, I went to I jail, didn't I? <laughs> well, I went to jail. I didn't know about the choice. I didn't know about the choice. It stuck me in the fucking screen. So I had to come off the steroids. So that was a good thing in a way. 
But like, I suppose training would be your, you need to like lift something or like huh. hit a heavy bag or something to get rid of the, the energy. Not just a training enough, but then yeah. I used to work the doors every night as well, you know? Yeah. The dorm when I used to be in, how I got rid of my energy was like, I just wait for somebody to step out of line and then you would rag them all over. Seriously? Yeah. Did you? Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, regular, man. Yeah? Just rag them all over. Not a punch bag, not the worst fucking people. Hmm. Jesus. Yeah. How often? So, like, every night sort of thing? Well, every night, yeah. Back then in the 90s, there was a rough old do in Newcastle, you know? And there was no CCTV. Uh, you were really free and easy to do what the fuck you wanted. If some, um, but where we were as well, it was like a rough end boozer. And we used to get loads of piss heads coming in. But if you knocked them out, they'd, they'd be fine with it. They don't go to the police or no. They say, well, I deserve that probably. I didn't know that was... <laughs> a, I didn't realise that was like a thing... What? You know, like, you know, bouncers fighting with civilians. I know, but it doesn't like, happen now. No, no, no. That's But back but then, then, yeah. yeah. Back then, regular. That's what we used to wait for. We used to wait for somebody to start a fight. <laughs> somebody to give edge and bang, mash him. <laughs> 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 but now they just take him wow. out. But back then, we, but back then, you used to fuck him up. In front of everybody. It was a totally different, it was a totally different game back then. Clearly. Yeah. 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 What, what are your thoughts on the classification um, of steroids? Do you think they should be illegal? Steroids are legal for personal use. Well, that's right. Yes. For personal use. Yeah. Which is okay if you do it in moderation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like any drug, moderation. That is the key. With steroids, with pharmaceutical drugs. Cocaine, heroin, weed, ecstasy, it's all moderation. You have to control the drug. You can't let the drug control you. When the drug controls you, that's when you know you've got a problem. So how do you manage it then? Well, you just got to control the drug. Uh, I guess it's not easy, is it? It's not easy. No. No. What? No. I can't say, right, this is how you do it. No. But, mm -hmm. but this is the key. You manage the drug. You got to say it yourself, right? Like, I don't know. It's having a guess. Like, say if you have cocaine, there's people take cocaine every day, mm -hmm. which is bad mm -hmm. because you don't need it every day. You might need it once a month if you're having a little party, you're having a little session. Fair enough. But if you're taking it every day, you just got to fucking tell yourself, right? Listen, I've got to do weekdays off and just do it in a weekend, and then just slowly wean yourself off. <laughs> And mm -hmm. then just keep it weekends or special times. Yeah. I guess it's having the self-awareness yeah. to recognise when it becomes a, like a problem. Or well, a, if it's an, controlling you, yeah. Yeah, if yeah, it, exactly. If it's controlling you. Yeah. And then, and then yeah, you've got a problem then. Yeah. Hmm. Are you still training? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Well, well, <laughs> You're in good shape, man. I've been in Glasgow for three days. Yeah. I ain't eaten for three days. That's probably why I look like this. Yeah. No, not at all. Yeah, you're, you are. You're clearly in there. Fuck me up the Glasgow. <laughs> <laughs> but they're a top bunch. They're a top bunch, man. Oh, what does your what does your sort of split look like like now? Then what what your your training training? Yeah, uh, training. I just do one body part a day. Yeah, yeah. Uh, do arms one day, back one day, legs one day, chest one day. Uh, I try and do five times a week. Try and do it, yeah. So it's good going. But yeah, but now I don't have to push myself. You know, I don't go heavy no more. Because uh, there's no need, you know. I did the heavy work back in the day, the big deadlifts, the big squats, and all yeah. that. So now you just have to maintain and just keep it ticking over. Uh, because muscle memory, yes. it's easy, you know. It, you know now, now it's easy. You just got to put the work in early, mm -hmm. and then later on, it's so easy. Like now, there's people hitting the gym when they get their 30s or 40s, and they've never trained before. It's hard work, man. Yeah. Very hard work because your body isn't used to this and you will never get in that condition unless you go proper extreme on it. Take all the necessary growth hormone, the drugs, the steroids, the proper diet. And even then, your body might not uh, respond to any of that. Yeah. Because there's only like in the world, what they say is, this, I watched a program once about it, yeah? And they said there's only 5% of people that have genetically... Genetically, like sort of athletes. 
right. there's only about 5% of them people who will respond instantly to training. And I believe I'm one of them because sometimes I don't train for months and I'll just hammer the drink and drugs. <laughs> and, but I've still got abs and I still look good. And people yeah. think, well, you just believe I'm But I said, no, this is my worst, man. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and then there's about another 30% of people who will respond a little bit. Yeah. Who their bodies will change. And there's a massive percentage, about 40 to 50%, that no matter what you do, your body shape is hardly going to change. Mm-hmm. You will never get them abs. You will never get that big square chest. You will never get them big shoulders and this because your body, and for women it's the same, mm-hmm. because you aren't made that way. There's only about 5% of us made this way. Mm. So when people try to strive for this, uh, carry on doing it, <laughs> but you, it's a losing battle for a lot of you. <laughs> I would say like, don't go that strict on the diet. Don't say, oh, I've, I have to eat this, I have to eat that. I went, because really, it, you know, it don't really make a lot of difference. <laughs> Just live your life, really, to yeah, like yeah. a certain, to a certain degree of coolness. Eat what you want in reason. Don't go that strict, because at the end of the day, you ain't going to get up on no show. You ain't going to be doing any of that or posing. <laughs> and no one really looks at you anyway, because most of the time, I see a lot of people in my gym, and they get changed in the showers, uh, changing room men and that, and they look as if they've never been to a gym in their lives. You know? Mm. And, but they look at me, yeah, I think, right. Okay, I wouldn't mind looking at that at 51. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah, uh, yeah. But they're all younger than me. And they look like shit. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, <laughs> they look like shit. Mm. And I think, yeah. I'm, like, I'm glad, so glad I trained at an early age. Because uh-huh. once you start training at an early age, it keeps it in. Mm. It keeps it in and then you can take a few, a few months off come back to it and then it comes back to you again. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It comes back to you. Huh. And diet, uh, diet, I just eat what I want. Seriously? Yeah. yeah. I eat anything, See, I, man. I need to stop saying seriously. Yeah. <laughs> I eat it. I eat anything. But I don't eat a lot though. Not loads. Portions <laughs> are small. Is that right? Mm. So like small and regular? Or well, just small? <laughs> it just depends where I am. Yeah. What I'm doing, if I'm driving, if I'm on the road, traveling and then I hardly eat. I hardly eat. But when I'm at home, yeah, I'll get stoned, I'll get munchies, and, and then I'll eat in excess. Mm-hmm. So it's up and down. Right. Yeah. But a key to keeping your body good is water. Because mm-hmm. it, it works like a camel system. Like a camel thinks it's not going to get any water for a few months, so it'll store water. So if you don't drink water, mm-hmm. your body will store it and make you bigger. Mm. Right? Mm-hmm. Than somebody that drinks water regular, regular, regular. Because then your body thinks, right, okay, it's getting water regular. I don't need the excess. And then you will lose weight. Mm. Water is the key. Surprising, that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, I should do this for a living, giving all this advice <laughs> out, you know? <laughs> <laughs> my diet, yeah, this is me. I'm going to tell you my diet routine once. Yeah, you've asked about this. Yeah, it's a good one, this. Uh, I lost a stone in a week, right? People at gym say, how do you lose a stone in a week? I, I'd, I'd fucking love to do that. I went, right, okay. This is what I did. Cyprus I went, yeah, okay. Uh, I was a bit of a downer there. Anyway, I just protein drink in the morning and then just on the drink all day. <laughs> just drink all day, yeah? Alcohol and that's it. Go to sleep. The next morning, protein drink again, drink all day. I did that for seven days, right? At the fifth or sixth day, you start feeling a bit... <laughs> <laughs> right? And the weight, the weight just dropped off me. I lost a stone in a week on that diet. <laughs> I do recommend it if you can handle it. Oh. I do recommend it if you handle it and you, will lose, and you will lose a stone because alcoholic is a diuretic, you know? Yeah. It will. Yeah. It will. And if you're only having a protein drink, that means you're not having any bullshit. Yeah. You're just getting the goodness and the minerals, which is okay to keep you alive. <laughs> yes. <laughs> It'll keep you alive. And then you're dehydrating yourself. And then, but then you're dehydrating, but you drink water at the end, obviously. Yeah. Drink water, but then <laughs> you're fucking, I lost a stone in a week, man. But then I put, but then I just stayed in and smoked weed for five days and I put half a stone back on in four days. Right. So it's just like that. Yeah. My yeah. like my body is used to like extreme, <laughs> yeah. so it's ready for it, you know. Yeah. 
give him what you want is ready. <laughs> yeah. I need to ask you this question. Uh, it's a wee bit out there. Huh. Let's say you're walking down the street and someone just barges right into you. What's the first thing you do? William, I said, what the fuck? What's your <laughs> fucking problem, man? <laughs> and then his reaction, if he apologises, and then, yeah, okay, but if he doesn't apologise, and then, yeah, I'm going to have to take it further. Have to. What's the first thing you do in a street fight? Street fight? I don't get in street fights no more. Uh, not really. But if it does happen, the best thing to do is just hit them first and hit them fucking on the sly. When they're not expecting it, there's no point offering somebody out and you're all squared up. No. Mm -hmm. It's best when you say, right, come on outside. And you go, yeah, okay. And when you turn, bang. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, why do you want them? I wear expensive clothes. I don't want them ripped up the house. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Just do the damage and walk out. But... That rarely happens, mm -hmm. because no one, because no one speaks to me like that anymore, uh, and I don't speak to people like that anymore. So that confrontation is no, I haven't done that for years. Yeah, huh. it's fascinating. I, yeah. I'm a big mixed martial arts fan. I'm not a, just yeah. to be clear. I'm not advocating violence in any way. Yeah. Um, but I did a lot of reading, like Jeff Thompson. Yeah. Um, he wrote a few books about you know defending yourself, and sometimes right. situations escalate, and you can't, you just can't avoid yeah. it. You need to just yeah. be able to deal with it. In which yeah. case, like hitting yeah. someone, as you're saying, yeah. um, is the best way to deal with it. But, but a good way of doing it, self defense, is like if you're confronted by somebody, yeah, and you're in a concentration, yeah, boom, he's staring at you, and you're staring at me, yeah. Mm -hmm. Just say something like orange juice. Yeah, it's yeah. me. The adrenaline, yeah, yes. of him. Will drop and at that instant, bang! <laughs> <laughs> no, listen, that's how to do it because that's when he, he, it's disrupting like the that, programming. And go, yeah, and, and bang! bang. <laughs> but it's got to work in that second. Yeah, because it'll drop in that second, and that's when you hit him. But it's just trying to get your advantage, isn't it? You know, just trying to work it yourself. Mm -hmm. For women as well, it's a good one. You know, mm. if they're in a concentration, if they need to get out of something. Drop them with a line and you just got to make a move and fucking run or something. I don't know. You know what confrontation you're in. Yeah. How do you think other people perceive you? Perceive me? Like, you know, like, what, say you're on the train today, right? Yeah. So people, like, look at Jet and yeah. they're like, what, what do you think right. they think about you? Okay, well, right. <laughs> Nobody will sit next to me on a train or a bus, <laughs> right? You know, when a train is full... Because I make sure I like the table, yeah? <laughs> Once, a, loads of times, loads of times, yeah? <laughs> the whole train will be full, but they won't sit next to me. Some people will. It's normally young girls who do. Because they're not really that arsed. But it's rare a man will. Because a man might feel intimidated, but like a woman will come and sit there. Young girls, not older girls, no. They might feel, I don't know. But young ones aren't bothered, they're just going to sit and... They're all right. <laughs> do, 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 you, do you aim to look or be intimidating? No, I don't. Is you know, just, I just keep my mouth just, shut. Is it just accent? Mm -hmm. It's just how you look. <laughs> just how I look. Yeah, it must just be how I look. I can't help that. I can't help that. No, you can't. No. It's true. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, that can, it can be a good thing and a bad thing, right? Yeah. Well, but I, I don't, don't go out of my way to look, look bad. Walk around like that. <laughs> no, no. I mean, I'll give evil eyes to people. No. You know, I'm nice to people. I'm pleasant. And I'm, you know, yeah. Polite. That's it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> oh, jeez. Right. We're going to move on to Alpha CBD. Uh -huh. um, how did it come about? When did you, right, you know, come get about, involved? I was in... working right. I was in Cyprus <laughs> at the time. Uh, okay. uh, Brian Charrington. Um, he's, he's like another good guy. For podcast, if okay. you wish, yeah, he's he's cool, he's funny, and he's got a lot of stories. <laughs> and he he's got his he was producing his company, Show Pure, it was called at the time in Spain. It's all merchandise there, it's all made there. And I contacted him. I said, "Listen, you know, I'm interested in this. This is about two years ago." And he went, "Right, okay." He told me what he's doing. He told me it's a real deal, how, how it's made, and he explained it all to me. I went, "Right." Okay, I want a piece of it because in Cyprus I was living there. I wasn't doing anything. I was just getting drunk every day. No work. I was waking up at two o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, got an hour right, driving around drunk, just doing what I want. 
just shit life really, mm. just boring. Holiday mm-hmm. every day, but, uh, but like it's no good if it's every day. Mm-hmm. So I just thought, right, I thought, okay, I'm done. Right, okay, I focus on this. And Andrew, my girlfriend at the time there, she was interested in it and she put it forward as well. I went, right, okay, so in Cyprus, we started to sell Sure Pure and then me and my girlfriend, we split up and now went to England and I kicked it off there and then it's just gone from Sure Pure to my company. Because uh, I thought, okay, I can see what's happening here. So I set up my own brand and the oils are tip top, they're excellent. The feedback we're getting is brilliant. And now it's just gone quite. Yeah. The, your your prices are excellent. Yes, you know? yes, yes, yes. We can keep it this cheap for a reason. Because uh, we don't pay for units. We don't pay for staff. Because it's just me and my mum. We do the everything I've done. I've, I've uh, designed it. Uh, the packaging is done, obviously, yeah. But the boxes we get folded up and the labels and the bottles we get. We label up, box up, everything ourselves. So every bottle you will get is hand done but by right. me. Yeah, it's hand done by me. And that's how we can keep it cheap. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just like me and my mum and so we don't have to pay staff if you have to pay staff. And then, okay, the price goes up. You know? Ah, okay. It's more mm-hmm. expenses. But now our expenses are minimum. Bottom level. It's just me and my mum and my mum don't want a wage. <laughs> <laughs> She's <laughs> happy to help me out. So that's how... <laughs> That's how it's rolling. Okay. Yeah, because I want to give this to people uh, because the same products like this one, the 2,000 milligram, mm-hmm. I see people sell this for £120 yeah. online. And it's exactly the same oil and I sell that for £50. Mm-hmm. And it's exactly the same. Mm-hmm. But people are paying £120. Mm-hmm. But okay, they want to make more money and they've got this, they've got overheads, they've got that, blah, blah, blah. But they're making a lot of money if they're charging £120. Yeah. Obviously. Yeah. That's a, yeah. that's a massive profit. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know, you know, there's probably sort of regulation as to the sort of benefits that you can advertise, but I'll just cover a few, you yeah. know, okay. based on what I've read, you know, uh-huh. anti- antidepressant, anti-anxiety, anti-inflammatory, pain yeah. relief, neuroprotective, relaxant, helps with insomnia. Um, do you take it yourself? Personally, for me, mm-hmm. I'll tell you my benefits. I had eczema. Oh. I had eczema all my life, gone now, it's never come back. I had bad back from all the training, from the heavy weight, from the mm-hmm. deadlift, the squatting. I used to get bad back pains, regular, regular, never come. And the best thing about it, I had uh, premature arthritis in my hands when I was 28. Oh, God. From all the steroids I was taking, they said I had hands of a 45 year old. Because when I used to go on the bags, yeah. my hands, they used to ache afterwards, yes. Yeah? So, oh, well, what's all that about? And so I went to the doctors, and I went, the amount of steroids you're taking is deteriorated my bones. And uh, I went, right. <laughs> but luckily I went to jail for a bit, so I had a clean period, and I've took this, and now I've been checked, and now they said, it's better than your age, your bones. And now I go in the bag, and that's now I go for Yeah. You know, it does the whole system, man. Yeah. The whole system. Yeah. My mom had asthma, always had an inhaler. Uh, now, doesn't need the inhaler no more. That's not. You know, it's a wonder drug sort yeah, of thing. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. But, then, but the government have kept this away from people, obviously. It's pharmaceuticals, yeah. cancer, but it is population control as well. Mm-hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. Um, you can't let everybody live f- f- forever anyway, because it's going to be a strain on the NHS. Yeah. Uh, because you know what they're like, these people, they grow old and they haven't got any money. Mm-hmm. Where are you going to put them and who's going to feed them and how are you going to do that? They see, just let them Good die. questions. You just let them die. But uh, now we're doing this, so... Yeah. Let's, yeah. We might all live to 100 years old now, let's see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> let's see what happens. <sighs> yeah. So alphacbd.eu is your website. People uh-huh. can find you online easy enough. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. Um, this is a funny one because obviously, you know, if there was one word that somebody, if I was asked to describe you in one word, it would probably be Alpha. Right. So how did that, how did Alpha become your uh, thing? It's the, the name alpha, of your brand yeah. as well. Right, yeah, because, <laughs> I, because, I, because, because I wanted a brand and on the actual brand, there's a Black Panther there. Yeah. And I just wanted something that reflected me in this. Mm-hmm. And I was thinking, I don't know what, and... I thought, right, uh, what like appealed to me? 
Animals, I love animals, yeah, for one. And the panther, wow, so sleek, effective. Mm. Uh, it does the job. I thought, yeah, Alpha CBD, why not? Oh. And so that's how I pushed it. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you, you mentioned animals. I need to ask you about your yeah, pets. Yeah, <laughs> your okay. pets are okay. just hilarious. So you've got four snakes. You've got Johnny, JLo, Kira, and BMF. <laughs> yeah. You've got two Argentine Tegu, which uh -huh. I'd never heard of, Chemical yeah. Sally and Osama Bin Laden. Yeah. And two tortoises, uh -huh. Charles Manson and Ted Bundy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Why reptiles, Chet? I'm what is it with the reptiles? Re reptiles are cool. Well, firstly, <laughs> reptiles are quite easy to keep. Yeah. Uh, but I do like reptiles, yeah, because they are really cool. And all the snakes are so efficient. And how they move. Like, a lot of people are scared of them, but that's why I like them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, people want to have a cat or this or that. Okay, a dog's cool, but a dog does need a lot of care and attention. And I travel a lot, and I can't really leave a dog in the house for like a day. Yeah. But a snake, you can. You don't yeah. need to be fed once a, mo once a week, you know? Right. Uh, they're all cool to leave for a few days, so they're easy and, but the snakes I have as well, it's not stuff that you will see in a pet shop. Uh, the Ridley Cave Racer, Kira Knightley, she's seven foot, yeah, she's a beautiful, she, like, she will be in, uh, normally in caves and they hang upside down waiting for bats, yeah? When the bat comes, bam, bam. So is she, is she a constrictor? No. No? No. Cave Racer. Oh, right. Slim. Okay. Seven foot. They're right. just hanging caves. Uh, J Lo is a bow constrictor. Yeah. Morph bow constrictor. Johnny is a royal python. And BMF <laughs> is a water cobra. Oh, wow. Yeah, he's bad. You can't <laughs> handle three of them. I can only handle one. Johnny is the only one you can handle. Oh. The rest bite you. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. You've been bitten, Johnny, but bit yeah, you, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. But it's okay, you know? It's all right. But the, none of them are venomous, I think. No, but the cobra will paralyze you for like a month. <laughs> <laughs> he will paralyze you for a month. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. He will fuck your muscle system up. Not kill you, but he'll not do good. some damage. Not good. Uh, tortoise, the Argentine tegu, how did you? Oh, the tegus are so cool. They are um, awesome. Yeah, I've Argentine never even heard tegus, of them. Yeah, um, they're from a friend of mine from Darlington. And they're massive. Yeah, they're so cool. They're on two levels. In the spring, I'm going to take them for walks. <laughs> I'm going to put leashes on them. <laughs> no, I'm, no, I'm going to take them for walks. Uh, yeah, both of them. Um, I've got loads of area around mine. Wait till spring kicks in. I'm going to take them out and everything. I'm gonna look crazy with two big lizards <laughs> walking, two big lizards. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I can't wait there, was a, there was a famous picture of Mike Tyson with his tiger on a All right, on well, a yeah, leash. Yeah, and a lead, yeah. You're gonna have your two massive like dragon lizards. Yeah, legs. that's even better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh dear, dear. <laughs> Unreal. Um where are we? Alpha C B D pets. Um yeah, it's funny because when I was messaging you last night, you said um, something about zoos. Uh -huh. What are your thoughts on zoos? Like zoos, yeah. Like people say zoos are um, cruel and they shouldn't be, okay? But I say no. Because if you look at the wild now, yeah, the wild is getting more and more worse and worse, more and more cut down. The poachers are killing. And why would you want to be in the wild, you know? Because an animal that lives in a zoo lives more than double its age mm -hmm. and plus has the care and attention if they have a disease they get antibiotics if they get an injury if you get an injury in the wild like if a lion is going hunting anything can happen you know i watch it all the time it's all i do all day long watch all the documentaries <laughs> yeah. Geo. it's all i do <laughs> i either do that or listen to my music at normal tv i don't watch and um but you see the injuries that, that they get and then they're right and then it's game over, and then they have to wait to die mm. through pain, mm -hmm. uh, through hyenas, and then they come and rip me to bits, and this and that. And the life expectancy, even when uh, lioness has cubs, only one in six gets to like the full age. In captivity, it's not like that. They will all reach the full age. Mm -hmm. They're all cared for. All they want is a territory, a lion. They don't want to roam around the whole world. Mm. They just want their area. Mm -hmm. As long as they're safe in that area, they are totally happy. As long as another lion doesn't come in and try and take it over. 
And so why do people say zoos are cruel and this and that? Okay, they're cruel for birds. That's the only thing I see. Because a bird needs to fly. A bird likes to emigrate, you know, go from one country to another when it comes to uh, summer or winter. Mm -hmm. That, yes, you are taking that away from it. But animals are just happy with it. Like a snake is just happy in its own little area. If he knows there's not another animal who's going to come try to take that area over, he's perfectly happy in that, that little area. Mm -hmm. And the lions are the same, the rest are the same. And plus they're all taken care of. Zoos that are badly run, obviously, no. Uh, but now if there's regular, but I think every zoo in England's all cool. Mm -hmm. And most ones in the, apart from the ones in Thailand where they drug the tigers, where they keep loads of them in one environment, they are drugged because you can't keep loads of male tigers in one, one place anyway. So I mm. know for a fact that they're drugged. Mm. That's not good. No. No, that's not good. Just to say that I've, we've got loads of tigers here, yeah, but they're all like a bit. Mm -hmm. That's not great. That's not good, no. Give it the right environment, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. I'm going to ask you, start to get a little bit deeper with some of the questions. Um, what's, what do you think happens when you die? What's your relationship with death? I think when you die, you die, don't you? Uh, because... I think there can't be anything else because if you imagine all the dead souls that have already died, mm -hmm. imagine. But, but, but they ain't here, are they? Not no. that we're aware of. No, because there's that many that have died and there's no really evidence of any of that. And science has proved with like, with like intelligence. It's only the super intelligent people that do not think there is a God. If you've got a brain, really, <laughs> you know, yeah, we know there's not a God. <laughs> you, All scientists, physicians, astrologists, anybody with a brain who's in a degree, ask them if they believe in God, they'll go, eh. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, God is for people who just want hope. Okay. Cause they, because they need that, don't they? Because you don't have anything else. A person with a brain can work and, well, okay, I can achieve in life anyway. But a person that doesn't have that, like me, I don't believe in God, but I did at one time when I was in Spain because I couldn't believe the situation I was in and I used to go, oh, please, please, God, help me out of this. But then even now, though, I, I don't even believe in God. Yeah? But I still did it. Like praying? Why well, did pray? Mm -hmm. Because there's nothing else, is there? What else is there? When you're on your own and you're fucked up, so I did pray. Mm -hmm. So maybe, um, I don't know who I was praying to, I was just praying for something. Yes. Yeah. But so you don't believe that there's a, a God? No, a being, no. That is a total, that is a total impossibility, you know? Uh, yeah. And that's just for people who want hope and who are misguided and who aren't that, who aren't that intelligent, really, <laughs> to be truthful with <laughs> 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 how, how do you think you've um, evolved as a person throughout your life? Evolved, I still think I'm the same. Do you really? Yeah. Seriously? Yeah, man. I think I'm just like how I was as a child. Yeah, my thinking, my ethics, what I want, they're exactly the same as a kid. When I was a kid, they said, what do you want to be when you grow older? I think it was like five or six when we had to draw a picture. I drew a picture of the zookeeper. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> <laughs> That's me. That's what I want to do. My total dream in life, my end dream. <coughs> okay, Cyprus I've lived. North Cyprus is a possibility. Um, they don't have extradition laws where you can do something wrong and they can't bring you back. <laughs> so maybe there and land there is cheap and it's hot and have loads of land and set up like a zoo, a refuge type, you know, for mm. animals that are because there are animals everywhere that are like, like bears and this and that, and I would take them all on. And there I can get stuff there, because I know Indian lads in Cyprus and they work now in the fields for three to four euros an hour. <coughs> and them boys are also, and so I can always get a workforce there as well. Mm -hmm. uh, that's my plan plan. Let's see if it comes off. Yeah. So yeah. You, you do have uh, this hu sort of humane <laughs> caring side to you. Yeah that you want to help yeah. and where does that come from? Where did that come from? Because no one's helped me probably. Yeah, okay. Yeah. 
No one ever. Like, Not really. My mum has, yeah. My yeah. mum, my mum's been there, but nobody else really. Just had a hard shift, you know. Mm-hmm. I've had to help myself. Mm-hmm. And my mum, I never used to go to my mum for a lot of things because uh, I just used to deal with it myself. Right. Deal with my own problems. My brother never helped me. My sister never helped me. No, I, it was just me. Just you. Mm. In the second uh, interview that you did with Sean, he asks you, t- t- towards the end, he says, how happy are you in life? And you say, I don't know, sometimes I was happier in jail. Is that true? Yeah. Yeah. W- why is that? Well, yeah, because I'm just on my own, you know? Uh, if I had a family and kids, and then I would say, yeah, okay, I could do that. But I have got children, but they're all older now anyway. And Are you in touch with them? Yeah, I'm in touch with my youngest son. Mm-hmm. Zane, yeah, he's cool. He's doing a degree. He's really intelligent. He's doing a a degree now in historics, uh, ancient history, a journalist he wants to be. He's not impressed with my life whatsoever. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) No, which is so cool. And he's super intelligent. He got four A's in his A-levels. He went to a private school and he came top and he's like not interested in anything what I do, he's never watched one of my podcasts, never, not interested, doesn't give a fuck. He's just like really cool and he's laid back, which is excellent. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. See, it's, it's interesting you say he's not impressed with it. You know, I, I wouldn't, I don't look at you and think like that's impressive that you were able to like smuggle steroids or the fact that you've been in jail. Like, <laughs> none of that, none of that stuff particularly yeah. interests me. Yeah. I don't find it that appealing. Yeah. I, I'm interested in you as a person. What yeah. motivated you to do the things that you've done? How you've evolved? How you've changed? You know, these are the things that yeah. I find personally interesting. Yes. Yes. Because I can relate. You know, I feel as though throughout my life, I've sort of evolved. I'm quite different now to how I was in, say, my early twenties. Uh-huh. I think. Yeah. 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 So that's the sort of stuff that I, f- I find interesting. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Do you think there's a purpose? It, in life, do you think you have a, a life purpose? Purpose? <sighs> Not really. Uh, just do what you can, you know? Just do what, like... Like, now, okay, I, I'm in a position now to help people. Before I never was, yeah? So now I think, well, why not? Why not? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, other people should be doing the same. It's like things like Africa, yeah? You know where? They still haven't got any water pipes there in loads of countries. I'm thinking, what? <laughs> I've been seeing these adverts from when I was a little kid. And all the millions and billions that have been sent there, are you telling me that they still haven't got water pipes there? Yeah. Do you know what charity is? Listen, it's all... Africa, I think, is bad. Asia's bad. England's bad as well. Only about 5% anyway. Cancer research, it goes to the course. They're all as bad as each other. I think the only way to do it, it's got to go through a proper, like, say, like, if I said to myself, right, okay, I'm going to collect money and I'm going to go do the pipes myself, hire the plumbers myself and do it, Mm -hmm. then it'll be done. Why don't these, um, I don't know why nobody does that, just get a hold of it and do it. Instead of giving money to the African politicians, they're no good, man. They're no good for nobody. Not their own people, especially not for for nobody, man. You got to, somebody's got to take this in hand. Yeah. But whether they will allow that or not, whether people have tried to do this in Precise, the past, yeah, exactly. or whether they've said, no, yeah. you can't do that. Yeah. Because this is uh, our council, our thingy, we have to do it. But if that's the case, then, then, then they're totally wrong. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If they're not, not letting people come and help their people. Yeah. What's all that about as well? Mm-hmm. I think it, th- there needs to be insight into this. All yeah. these charity organisations, you know? Yeah. Um, remember uh, James Cook? Yeah, I know that name, yeah. Cook Report, mm-hmm. where he used to go and expose people. <laughs> yeah. But he was bad. He used to have a big firm with him because he used to go and expose loads of bad people. <laughs> but he was so entertaining. We need someone like him to go to these places. Boom, right. I want to investigate where this money has gone so mm-hmm. far. How much does it cost to build? A pipe thingy from here. Yeah, yeah. Do something like that. Why did somebody do something like that? That's what it needs. Possibly putting their life at risk of doing that, I guess. I think so. You might get shot, yeah. (laughs) 
It's <laughs> <laughs> a risky project. Yeah. Oh, it might be one for you, Jay. Yeah, you'd be comfortable doing that, surely. If I get back up on that, yeah, yeah. if I get back up, it's televised all the time. <laughs> I'll feel safe. <laughs> yeah. so, how would you like to be remembered? What would you like your legacy to be? No, oh, there ain't no legacy, man. I don't no? know. No, I don't know, man. Uh, there ain't no legacy. I, I can't say I'm that cool. No. Nah. Just do what I do. If people want to remember you how they will, and then okay. I know I have helped a lot of people. Mm -hmm. uh, I've saved a lot of people's lives in jail as well. And I know then people sort of remember me, but a lot of people remember me in a bad way. So it's 50-50, isn't it? I was reading a book recently. Um, I can't remember the name. I, I can put a link to this in the, um, in the description on YouTube. But it's a book about the fact that you know, if you've met, say, a thousand people in your life, <laughs> every to every single one of those people, you're a different person. Yeah. You know, you're who you are from your perspective. Yeah. But to everyone else, there's no there's no one chat. No. There's just loads of different chats yes, in the yes. minds of all these different yeah. people. Yeah. Which, when I thought about that, was like it kind of blows your mind a little bit. But that's the thing, like. Yeah. You know. No. But, but yeah, ultimately, right, you, isn't it? but you ultimately define how you are now and who you wish to be and how you want to impact the world. You can choose yeah. that. You can change that tomorrow if yeah. you want to. Yeah. Yes. You know? If you believe in like free will, you know, the fact that it, your, your, your destiny isn't already predetermined. No, it's not predetermined because it just goes from here to there, from here to there, here to there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, but you're, you're, it, it, looks, it looks like you're on a good path though. Yeah, I think so. Now I am, yeah. How do you avoid it taking any sharp turns? Because I don't get involved in any criminal activity. Yeah. So, and that's surefire way, really. Mm -hmm. Just don't, just don't put yourself in a position like that, because mm -hmm. then it can all come crashing down, can't it? Yeah. Mm. How do you define success? Define success. Yeah. What does success look like to you? Okay, success for me. I know there's people that go on about it, yeah, saying. It's not about money, it's having a happy <laughs> life and children, and then, no, that's not success at all. The cocaine is good, but it's not success. It's not the complete, it's not the 100%, it's not the whole of the moon, baby. Mm -hmm. uh, success is the whole of the moon. Uh, money, having people around you, having family around you, being safe. That's it, isn't it? Four things, really. But out of them, I've probably only got one of them. Can you get the others? I don't know. I don't know. You can try. Yeah, we all try, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Life's all about trying. <laughs> yeah. But sometimes it's like, yeah. it, it can be a lot of lost energy as well. It could be a lot of lost energy where you can focus out on other things and get other things done better for other children. Not mine. Leave them. I'd rather focus on other people's. That's, that just, I find that quite fascinating. Yeah. Why? Why is that? Because my other three children, uh, they've just, they've, because their ex-wife just, uh, I've never seen them since 1998. And I've seen one of them, or two of them, but just briefly, they've just asked me for money when I haven't, I've said, I'll give you money, but I want a reason why you want the money. And then I said, come and meet me. And they said, no, we ain't beating you. Just put it in my account. I went, no, I'm not going to do that. And then, and then just get abusive. And went, yeah, you're just like my mum said, you don't give a fuck. You're just this, you're that. And uh, it's just their mother poisoning them. Okay. And this has got a lot to do with like people. Yeah, it's not being a bad father. It's having a poisoned mother. And I've sent them money and Christmas cards every year I was in jail. Even when I haven't seen them since 1998 until they were 19, all of them. I still paid for them. Mm -hmm. But I never got a thank you letter once. Mm -hmm. And neither did my mum and dad. They sent them birthday, Christmas cards, Easter presents. I said, well, at least you can send them a thank you card. Yeah. Okay, you might hate me, but why do you hate my mum and dad as well? But they're good enough to send you money until you're all 19. Mm -hmm. And we haven't seen you since you were two and three. Uh... And that's that, children, you know? And so I have tried them. I try my best, man. I try my hardest. But if they don't want to know, they don't want to know. So, okay, fuck you. But now, 
because I'm, I am helping other children, and now one of them is saying, what about me? You don't help me, you know? I'm a fuck off, man. You're 28 years old now. Mm. Fuck off, you ain't no kid. <laughs> mm-hmm. Do you think they hate you? Yeah, they fucking hate me. They want me dead, yeah. I get loads of bad messages off them. But, but, but I'm not interested, man. Mm-hmm. Just fuck off and leave me alone, I say. I'm getting on my life, you get on with yours. Mm-hmm. I did try to be a part of their life, but they didn't let me. I didn't get that chance, man. And when, I, when, I, when, I, when you do try, they just feed, and then they just hit you with all your old shit. Oh, you're just a drug dealer, gangster bullshit. My mum's right about you, you don't care about. You know. Oh God, whatever, man. Mm-hmm. You're only little kids at the time, man. Just sharp. Drama you don't need. Yeah, just wipe your mouth and get on with it. I mm-hmm. fucking did. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'd like to see you get down my fucking life. And you're whinging about yours. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. What's the best piece of advice you've ever received? Mm, best piece of advice? <laughs> I'd imagine you've had probably various pieces of advice throughout your life. <laughs> Some better yeah. than others. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what? I didn't really get advice of people, yeah? This is the thing. You know me, I, I do get advice to people, yeah? Mm-hmm. But I didn't really used to get advice. Because I, because I was always on my own and I had to work out my own mistakes. Mm-hmm. And I did fuck up a lot of times. I did fuck up a lot of times. It would have been a hell to me if I had somebody to say to me, it's, it's best to do this way, yeah? Do it that way. Don't speak to these people. Do mm-hmm. that. Uh, but advice. One thing that sticks out in my mind, yeah? Mm-hmm. Churchill's saying, yeah? Nobody told me, yeah, but I read it years ago, yeah? <laughs> if you stop at every dog that barks at you, you never get to your destination. So sometimes you've got to walk away. I like that. Yeah. That's a good one, that. That is good. Because it's true, because if you don't stop, <laughs> you ain't got much of thing. Because then another dog will come, won't it? Just bypass them, man. Just bypass the shit. And just focus on what you're doing. Mm-hmm. Because people are going to hate me. Like me, I, the comments on the podcast, I know people, I know mine are quite good apparently, yeah? yeah. But I don't read them. Do you not? Yeah. I don't read them. Uh, because sometimes they can, they can put you in a little bit of a bad mindset as well. Mm-hmm. Some of them. Uh, especially when they're being like racially abusive, insulting my mother or this and that. They just pick up on anything what's going to like. And I think, well, no, no, I don't really read them. So I'd rather not like read them and think, because I think, fucking who is this cunt? <laughs> I fucking pay to find out where this cunt lives. I know, but I don't want that going through my head. No, exactly. Yeah, yes. I don't want like, fuck, I'm gonna kill this bastard now. I, I fucking ring him. But then, but then, why do, why, why would I let that comment affect me that like that? Yeah, I know, I know. But it does put you somewhere in the arm and I'll fucking kill you. <laughs> You, you <laughs> fucking whole family of the whole spectrum. <laughs> I know, so I so I so that's why I don't want to get in that mindset. <coughs> yeah, because some people have nothing else better to do but to slag people off. Precisely. Yeah. Yeah, they must have a pretty bad because life they just sit at home, don't they? You know, yeah. they know their lives are shitty. Anybody yeah. who gives a shitty comment, you know, you're not successful, you're not rolling it, you're not killing it, you're not happy. Yeah, because then people do not do that. They don't go, oh yeah, fuck that. <laughs> you're doing it, oh fucking hell. He's getting on with his life now. Fucking, I'm not happy with that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. How do you like deal with haters now, without, haters without now, wanting to uh, kill them? I don't get any. You just... Apart from on comments and things like that. Yeah, just ignore yeah, it. just ignore the fools because you've got to see them for what they are. Then nobody's really... Because uh, they always go through false... False uh, p- profiles. Nobody actually says who they are. Yeah. It's very rare now. And somebody will show their face and say, this is me and this is what I'm doing. Because, mm-hmm. okay, and then you're going to go to war. Mm-hmm. <laughs> go to war. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's all expenditure. Wars was expenditure. Yeah. Yeah, because I'm gonna have to pay people and you're gonna have to pay people. Let's go to war. But I'm ready to spend money. 
<laughs> yeah. If, if you had the opportunity to speak to your 20 year old self, what would you say? 20 year old? Yeah. Yeah, this is when I was a virgin. And yeah. Never had a girlfriend, didn't have no mates. Uh, what would I say to myself? But there's another story as well. I opened up a clothes shop as well, you know, 21 years old. I had that for four years. In Newcastle, I was the first person to sell Vivian Westwood. Oh, Duffer that's St. George, Nick Coleman. I, I was the only male shop to get a mention in Vogue and Elle magazine. They did things on me, yeah, because my shop was so cool. Um, <laughs> in that period, I dated Kylie Minogue, Naomi Campbell, Kate Moss. Uh, I was mixing it with all the, but that's a whole different, but that's a section I never, nobody even knows about. What? Yeah, at 21 to 24. And then after 24, I got involved with the steroids and the drugs. So from then to 21, I was in my dad's shop. Mm -hmm. 21, I had my own clothes shop. High level, it was like, uh, but I was too advanced for Newcastle. Right. I was too advanced. The only customers we were getting were like the gay, well, like the gay guys, because they had extra money to spend. Okay, they haven't got families, and my clothes were club wear. It was expensive, it was mm -hmm. like, uh, but they're advanced the gay people anyway, yeah? They're more stylish, more smart, and they got me, mm -hmm. and they got my shop. Whereas a normal Newcastle Geordie, uh, they just wear black or grey. <laughs> Where I was getting loads of uh, one-off pieces, and uh, ladies wear as well, men's wear, and I was going to uh, Milan, uh, to Paris and London for the fashion shows, yeah. It's a whole chapter Getting of your life, life that like, never gets spoken one, yeah. about. No. But I've got loads of stories in that one. <laughs> don't, don't doubt that. And I was doing all the club scene then. That's when I met Boy George, Alistair Whitehead, all the big DJs. But that's a whole chapter where nobody even knows. Yeah. Nobody even knows that bit. I'm, I'm like absolutely yeah. mind blown. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. So, what? Sorry, I think we, we've kind of gone past the question a little yeah. bit there. Right, okay. <laughs> what would you say to your 20-year-old self? 20-year-old self, right. Well, that, well, that, well, that's what I wanted to do. That's what I did so, tell myself. Yeah. Keep, I want my clothes shop. I want to be that. an artist again. Yeah. Because now, I'm 21 now, so I'm a man now. So now I can make my own moves, yeah? My dad can't control me anymore. Yes. So I told myself, right, I'm going to do this, and this is what I want to do. So I did tell myself that, and I did do that. So stay on track? Stay you on know, track, like I couldn't really do that because it was uh, what was happening with the shop. It was a bit advanced for its time and the mm -hmm. rent and this and that. It, I had it for four years, but in the end, in the bills, I couldn't pay the bills. So I did rip off certain designers. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> got rid of the shop, got rid of the shop, and then I worked as a doorman and sold drugs. So I did attempt it. Right. I did attempt it, but it didn't work out. Because credit card fraud, I started to do that as well, to pay for the bills. Right, okay. With certain people, certain fa families from Newcastle area, they were working with grafters, and they were getting these cards freshly stolen. And we were just banging them through, and the police were watching my shop, and seeing all these gangsters coming in and out of my shop. So, but that's a whole different story, that one. So your 20 year old self would, yeah, just. I don't know. know what I would say because then I wasn't involved in no crime then, you know? Yeah. I wasn't interested in crime. I wasn't interested in crime until <laughs> yeah. mid twenties. Expect the unexpected. <laughs> Expect the unexpected, like, yeah, well, yeah. Brace yourself. You don't, well, you're right. <laughs> the advice is, yeah. Don't make any plans because it never works out the way you plan it. Never, ever. So don't sit down with your girlfriend and say, right, in 10 years' time, we're going to do this and do that because it, no, you haven't got a chance with that. Hmm. You don't know what's going to happen and you just got to just got to just do what you're doing. But don't fuck up. Don't fuck up with like heavy people. Serious crime, class A. Mm -hmm. uh, all these people now working with the police. There's not a lot you can get away with now before it comes on top. So I think all that 
unless you're working with the police, <laughs> yeah, it's a waste of time. Yeah, if you're working with the police, okay, go for it, baby. <laughs> 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 yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um my last script <coughs> my last scripted question right, big, big question. If you could change anything in the world, what would it be and why? Change anything. Anything. What we just talked about there? Mm hmm About all these pipes in Africa. That. That. Mm. Because um they have, they're like in Africa, they're like really, um, they're not getting any help with any education, with any sex education, the age is fucking rife and they say, uh, there's a well-known thing there saying that if you're a man with the age, to get rid of AIDS, you have to have sex with a child. This is what they, listen to me, this is, this is what all needs to be changed, That's man. And this needs to go through, um, the whole system with all the water, like all these kids that are dying and they got malaria. Why is it like that? I don't really get it. Because millions have been pumped into that. Mm -hmm. Millions, man. It doesn't cost that much to build pipes in Africa. No, it doesn't. <laughs> exactly. I know one doing No, it doesn't. It doesn't. Oh, no, they build side no. skyscrapers <laughs> yeah. Dubai. I know. I'm sure yeah. that that skyscraper costs more than to field, wow, massive area in Africa. Mm -hmm. I bet. But they can do that quick enough. Yeah. I they know. can put a script on it's the money. Because it makes they? money though. They can, they can put, I know, but they're getting money pumped into this. People are sending them money. I know. I yeah, know. so where the fuck but is obviously that? Obviously, at some stage, it's getting yeah, siphoned well, off. Yeah, well, that I would change. Know? Yeah, that I would change, you know? And, yeah. Uh, uh, how, like, uh, girls are getting treated in Asia. Mm. I always, like, uh, put, like, secret force. But then, even when you, like, put a secret force, some of them are corrupt. It never really works, does it? You've got to do it yourself, but you can't do everything yourself. I, yeah, I know. <coughs> you can work with a good team. Mm -hmm. Pick your team. Mm -hmm. But then you need to be a government, you know, to be able to do things like that. Yeah. Yeah. But we're going to do that, so it's, it's the way it's going to be, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good answer, though. Yeah. Chet, it's yeah. been brilliant having you. I've loved cool chatting man. with you. It's been fascinating hearing your yeah. your stories, sure. uh, your insights. It's been brilliant, and I've really, really appreciated your sure. your openness and your honesty. And thank you for your time. No problem, man. If you get good comments and they want me back on, I'll be back on. <laughs> sure thing. Yeah, yeah. And then I talk about my clothes shop. That, yeah. that's, that was excellent. <laughs> that was an excellent period of my life. Yeah. Yeah, that was excellent. I met loads of cool people then, DJs, film actors, models. That's crazy. Yeah. That's when the drugs to fucking close <laughs> 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 we'll, yeah. we'll keep that for next time. Yeah, right. Chet, well, it's been a okay. pl pleasure, my friend. Thank okay, you so much. And you. Cheers. And you. Thanks, guys.